how did you make the decision to go to FSU now? Florida State, right? That's right. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I thought about FSU long and hard. I, I had 83 scholarship offers and FSU was a place that I think could grow me as an athlete, student, philanthropist, leader, Christian. Uh, you know, I, I also felt that if I went to Michigan or Stanford or Notre Dame, I'd be another smart student athlete. But if I went to Florida State, I'd be the student athlete that they would highlight, exalt, put in front mm -hmm. of the governor, put in front of boosters and really help um, give me the opportunity to be you know, an outstanding scholar athlete. I also wanted to win a Rhodes Scholarship when I got to college. So Florida State talked to me about that on my recruiting visit, how you can mature as a student here to put yourself in a good position to win this scholarship that not a lot of people get, but we want to put our resources and activate our individuals around you so that you can win this scholarship and not only represent yourself, but represent our university because we're typically known as uh, a party school or maybe not a high academic achieving school. But if you win as an All-American football player, you can really set us apart. And so there was a lot riding on it, but I appreciated that relationship, that synergy that I had. I knew I wanted something out of FSU. FSU wanted something out of me and we worked together and uh, ma made it happen. That's great. You also won the, the Franklin D. Watkins Memorial Trophy, which is a premier African-American scholar athlete award in American high, um, high school for um, high school males. So was that from, that was before you got to college and you won that. So that was like, uh, should I say like really enticing to Florida FSU to see that they have this, this scholar and actually this young scholar coming here too, right? Absolutely. You know, I think Florida State noticed it. Uh, when I went on my recruiting visit, um, you know, I had a, a wonderful time at FSU walking into the cafeteria. They were playing this song uh, by the big timers. Everybody get your roll on. Everybody, yeah. everybody get your get roll on. So, well, roll, you know, right? so, so the last name, I mean, I was like, man, this is amazing. Then I walk and sit down and I'm sitting next to our president of our university who literally just had a concussion earlier in that day, but he knew that I was coming to dinner that night. So he told the Tallahassee Memorial Hospital, you got to discharge me because I got to see this guy, Myron Roll. So sit next to him, sit next to Bobby Bowden, the legendary football coach. Uh, the governor of Florida at the time was Jeb Bush. You know, his dad and his brother were presidents of the United States. He texted me and said, you know, Myron, it would be wonderful if you came to Florida State. So I got the governor. I got our president. I got the head coach. I got all the great players here. They're playing my oh, theme that was song. Coach Bi Bowden was a... Uh it's the coach at that time, yeah, right? Yeah, Coach Bobby Bowden was Bobby our head Bobby, coach. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. So, so the so the the whole experience was fantastic, and uh, and yes, understanding that I was a, a true student first, uh, and that I really prioritized that winning the Watkins Award and other awards like that uh, really just set me apart and made sure that FSU understood uh, that I wasn't here to play. I, I made kid, but I wasn't here to play, and it was time to get busy in class as well as on the field. Did you stay your whole four years at uh, FSU? I didn't. I graduated with my yeah. undergraduate degree in two and a half years because I entered college with yeah. a lot of credits. So I finished right. in two and a half. And then after my third year, I won the Rhodes Scholarship, which took me over to Oxford University. So I never played four years, only played three years. Uh, and uh, then after Oxford, came back and got drafted in the NFL. Okay. Now for the draft. Since you're a number one prospect in the country, high school, and then you go down real low. In the, uh, in, the, in the draft, how did you how did you take that? Well, it was difficult now, by, by the te by uh, Tennessee Titans, right? Correct. Yeah, it was, it was difficult for sure because I had a very very successful college career. Okay, after Oxford, did you go right into NFL draft or go back to school? Or how did that happen? Yeah, so when I won the Rhodes Scholarship was my junior year at Florida State, and um, you know when you win the Rhodes Scholarship, it's the highest academic award in all of uh, college, really, and not a lot of college athletes get it. So. Uh, at the same time, I was highly sought after in the NFL, where some projections were saying I was going to be a first or second round draft pick. I was having a right. great season, All-American, All-ACC, AC, ACC Defensive Rookie of the Year my freshman year. So had a lot of good momentum going into the NFL. Uh, I asked people what I should do. Uh, should I go to the NFL right now as a first round pick? Or should I take the Rhodes Scholarship and go to Oxford? Many people said I should go as an NFL player because you have such a transient window to play that sport. You know, you don't want to miss that chance. But I thought long and hard about it. I prayed. And I said, you know what? If I'm going to be a leader, if I want to set myself apart from other individuals, uh, and if I want to help inspire people, I'm going to choose education over athletics. And so I went to Oxford, got my master's degree in medical anthropology, spent a year and a half over there, came back. Didn't go back to college. I went and entered the NFL draft 
and got drafted oh, okay. in the sixth okay. round instead of the first round, made $50,000 guaranteed signing bonus instead of $7 million, and was a 53rd mm-hmm. man on the roster playing three years instead of eight, nine, or 10 years, as was projected. So definitely was a sacrifice on an athletic side of things by choosing that Oxford Road versus the NFL. But if I had to make the choice again, make it today, 10 times over, I'd make the same choice every single time. You'd do the same choice over again. Wow. I would. I would. You know, I, I think that it... Um, when I hear young people now come up to me and tell me that they've used my story as fuel or as inspiration uh, to go and be better and to go and improve themselves or place themselves in a position as a leader, uh, it really makes the decision worth the while. And I wrote about it in my book, The 2% Way, where I, I talk about struggling with these challenges of feeling like you're letting people down or you're not you know, meeting the expectations that people have for you. You know, I was, as you mentioned, and we talked about, I was either at the top or near the top of all of my class in high school, college, and now the NFL. And, and, and the NFL, I, I felt short of the success that I had in my prior seasons as a, as, mm. a, as a football player. But I think that leaving the game after three years, being healthy, not having any concussions, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, my hands were good enough so I can go on to be a neurosurgeon at Harvard like I am now. So all these things work together for the good. And and I write about how I took this sort of small step, 2% way process in, in getting to, to that moment and to that point. And seeing young people be inspired by the story definitely makes you feel rewarded uh, for that decision. Were you worried at any moment since it was like 255 uh, players in that draft, you were drafted, what, 207th. Were you worried at, at some point that I might not get drafted? Oh, no question. No question. I mean, it, you know, the draft was three days long and I was sitting around for three days on the last day, still seeing players go in front of me who I knew I was better than, who I'd outcompeted, who I'd outperformed. Mm. But spending that year and a half away, the sentiment in a lot of NFL teams was this guy's not serious about football. He's not committed to football. You see, he went to England. He went to Oxford to try to pursue education when other guys, all they have is football. So we're going to invest money in guys who had nothing else but to play this sport juxtaposed to this guy, Myron Roll, who if something gets a little bit tough in the NFL, he can go and leave and be a doctor. He can be a president. Do he can do something yeah. different. And so seeing all these guys get drafted in front of me, it was it was painstaking. It was tough. It was tiring. It was depressing. But when I got that call from a 615 number and Jeff Fisher from the Tennessee Titans said, you know, are you ready to be a Titan? I said, absolutely. Now I have my opportunity. Now my foot was in a door and it was a blessing to be drafted for sure.